we've been rocking some gigs, and uh, every night, like, we cry as one. <laughs> we cry together. That's true. After the Bible reading. Yeah, we do, we do a Bible reading, and then we cry, and then let it out. And shoot guns, and apparently? Went, Talk about guns? Up, sometimes we don't. <laughs> and we do tours, we hand a gun out to everyone, and just for protection. Right, so Every, everyone, it's, it comes with yeah. ammunition. Yeah. 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 Instead would, of a laminate, you get a gun. Put, yeah, right. I mean, it's like, if you have a gun, you can get into any show. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, so we, we think beyond the tour, it's like, we want to get into other shows. I'll let you guys answer, answer questions about your band. But I had a great time with you guys. Oh, great. Great. Uh, I'm Tom, I play guitar in House of Trump. I'm Nick, I play guitar. My name is Tim, I play bass. I'm Chris and I sing. Uh, and I'm also Chris and I play drums. And we're House of Trump. And this is Project Green Room. In a red. One, two, three. All right, so here we are with HostageCom in Philadelphia for the Wonder Years release show. How are you guys doing? Great, great, great man. Really excited for tonight. Now, your self-titled record has been out almost a year now, right? Yep. July would be a year. Yep. How, a year later, how has how's life been since the release of the record? You guys started touring full-time. What's, what's changed the most? In we have a lot less money. <laughs> First of all. No, uh, I mean, it's been going really well. Uh, I think we were fortunate that, like, we didn't put out the record and everyone just jumped on board right away. So it's been nice to kind of, like, we'll still play shows and we keep getting new fans every time, which is, I don't know, so I guess I think it's great. You know, a year later, we're still, people are still getting into it and whatnot, so. We have a lot, I feel like this record ended up doing a lot for us. Um, if I don't think we could have imagined like being able to tour this much prior to this record or being able to play like all these great shows or being company with all these great bands. So it's been uh, it's definitely opened a lot of doors for us and you know, we wrote it from the standpoint of like thinking people would probably not like it. So it's been really refreshing that people did like it. Right. I guess on this record, you know, you guys change your sound up a bit. Now a year later you you guys started writing new material for a new record or are you I, still we have, I mean, there's no no plans for an actual release of the record. We're still like figuring everything out, but um, yeah, we have a, a lot of songs that we did pre-production on. And we have uh, we have a new seven-inch coming out on Run for Cover Records. It's gonna have uh, War on a Feeling, which is the last song on um, self-titled. Um, it's gonna have a different version of that, and it's gonna have a new B-side that was from the self-titled sessions. That's coming out. Um, we're gonna have a comp track coming out this summer as well, and then, uh, you know, when we'll record these other songs, I don't know, we have way more than we could ever record, so, you know, I think we're kind of just a band that writes a lot. It's not like we, you know, we, have, we are due for an album, let's write one, it's like, oh man, we just finished our last album, but we have this whole new album ready, what are we going to do with all these new songs? <laughs> now what's great about you guys is you don't really fit in one genre of music, you know, you're kind of, you incorporate a lot of influences. What's your writing process like to get those, you know, the sounds in the record, you know, songs that sound, you know, like the Beach Boys on one end, but then you're going all the way, you know, another direction, more punk direction. I, I think we just don't rule anything out as far as like, we're not trying to write to a genre. We like a bunch of different things. So we're not ruling out any sort of like, you know, people, I hear people say like, this part will be over the top, or this is it, or they'll like it and they'll say that, but it's like, over the top of what? Right. You know, over like the barrier that you're supposed to set for yourself of what, <laughs> what you can do. So it's like, if you don't set those things, if you have complete disregard for any convention, then you can just fucking go for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, off, that, uh, off your last self title there's a song called Ballast and Stones. Um, would you guys take a stand, you know, for Equal Rights Marriage? What's the story behind that song? What sparked you guys to write that song, put that on the record? I saw a sign from a protest that said, uh, did you cast a ballot or a stone? I was like, holy shit. I was, and I looked, I tried to look it up and see where it was from and see like, like that's like, a, to me that was like the most perfect line to sum everything up. I couldn't find anything about it and I was like, you know, this should be a, a line that people know. If you notice on the, on the line notes, I cite the sign but I could never find right. who the person actually was. Um, so we just went with, we just went with, as far as like lyrically, uh, we had wanted to write a song to advocate for equal right to marriage and equal rights for any um, LGBT right. 
know, not just, not just Mary, but th that song discusses Mary itself. Um, and then, you know, that pretty much started it, and then we just wrote the song, and um, so far as musically, we just kind of wrote, we wrote, like, the music, but we always expected that we would constantly, like, trim back all of the conventional instruments right. and fill the space with, like, unconventional stuff. So, if you notice, like, some of the guitar parts are really simple, like, one or two things. Alright, so you guys just got back from the UK not too long ago. How is, what's the difference between UK shows, US shows? Well, we're, just, we're more established here, so yeah. it's hard to like judge them side by side, but we also did Central Europe, which was really good. Um, the UK, there were some shows that were like really great, and there were other shows that were like a lot of fun. I mean, it's just, it's hard to, I guess, compare it to, because the US is different all throughout, as is, I'm sure, England. I mean, we only got a snapshot of like, whatever, 10 shows, but yeah. we had a blast. We toured with Daylight and Bass and Vocal Bands, were awesome, and um, you know, some highlights. I thought the London show was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I really liked the city of Glasgow. That was a good show, too. Mm -hmm. uh, probably my favorite shows were in Europe. Like Paris was probably my favorite show. Paris so that's, that was really that was fun. fun. Paris. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Then we had a day off at the end of the tour. Um, and we just we stayed with a, a friend in Paris and just got to explore the whole day and like spend the, the rest of the day with some of the people that we were on the tour with. And it was just awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Did you ever think a year ago you'd be heading over to Paris to play a show? No you know, way. this, no, this no, band no, from no, Connecticut, no. a few guys from Connecticut would be heading over to Paris. No, well, I think no, that it, I think that while it was like it still surprised us, I think it was sort of like a goal to play in Europe. I think for a lot of bands like that's like the holy grail. But I think that we always conceived it as like the last thing we'd ever do as a band would be to like maybe for lucky play in Europe before we break up. But now to like think about that we are going to continue to play shows and like that's the start of something is like yeah Unreal. really kind of fucking wild yeah. Now you guys mentioned a new seven inch you're going to be releasing. A lot of bands, you know, vinyl has kind of come back. You know, especially with this, you know, these type of bands. What what makes you guys interested in vinyl to release it? You know, to listen to it. I think it's like it's a nice. I mean, for us, obviously, we have some like old influences, so having a single 7-inch is like a very, you know, 1950s, 1960s article for us to have, you know. I, I've, 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 always, I've always liked it because growing up I always liked to, like, have something, you know, like, uh, you know, even like buying, you know, buying a CD as a kid, like, I'd get it, put it in, look through the booklet and, like, really feel like, you know, alright, I'm sitting down listening to this. Connect like, this to the music. Mine. I think that's why it's like doing so well. It's because it's you know collectible and it, it it lets people really feel like all right, I like this band. I'm gonna go out and buy this. You know, put it on my record player. Even if they have it downloaded, you know, if they download it off the internet, just buying the vinyl and having it is kind of like you know I like this band enough to you know have this and you know be able to look at it and stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. You can get any music you want for free on the internet. Like at any second, you know? So having that physical thing is definitely a cool component. And it's another like artistic outlet for, you know, all the bands that put time into the doing something like that. Yeah. yeah. Now you guys are on Run For Cover Records, and the great thing about that label is it kind of seems more like a family than just, you know, a bunch of bands on a label. Do you guys feel that vibe too? Like, what's it feel like oh, being yeah. part of that label? As soon as we joined, we were like immediately in like a family of bands that we could tour with that wanted to tour with us that we were like being suggested from other bands in the on label, people who run the label like to, you know, Jeff and Andrew to like, I don't know, it just kind of like once we joined, it was like, okay, so now we're going to go on tour of transit and then we're going to play the show with Title Five, you know what I mean? So it's a cool thing when you're friends with all the bands that are on your label, you know, I mean, it's cool to be, you know, obviously it's cool to be friends with every band that you tour with, but, you know, when they're on your label, it's just... Kind of you see them all the time. You walk yeah. your tours across at various points. You, you know, like a show like this. You know, we're here with fireworks and we're bumping into the Wonder Years. You know, it just it kind of is. Uh, it's funny how not funny, but it's kind of impressive how much of a scene there is around like Run for Cover. And we saw that when we were in England too. Um, like, it's like its own scene. You know, internationally. That you know there are people who. That, those are the bands that they will grow up on, you know, the run for cover bands. Like, you know, like probably Drive Through or right. for us, like Revelation or whatever, you know what I mean? So, that's good. 
Now you guys are also up for voting for PETA's sexist, sexiest vegetarian, right? Sexiest, sexiest yeah. vegetarian. Sexiest vegetarian. Good sexiest. Thing you, good thing you got us in low light. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Tough competition. What, hey, who are you guys up against? I don't even know. Oh, Prince. 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 Yeah. Oh, Morrissey. Morrissey and Leo. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Andre 3000. Shania Twain. Now, how'd you guys get nominated? Like, what was the fans vote? Or? I have no we, idea. We, we, uh, I think we're just lucky. Just gonna run with it, though? We, we, did. we were definitely gonna <laughs> run with it. I mean, we're, yeah. we're running with it to the, to the extent that we're not questioning how it happened. It could have been a glitch. But <laughs> we're not gonna be, like, advertising, you know, like, putting on flyers. Like, yeah. Both for us. Well, I'm gonna start uh, stripping for yourself. Show. Yeah. And we'll work it. Might as well. Well, so what's next for Hostage Con after this tour? Let's see. A couple of gigs. Yeah, we're doing up some gigs. We're doing a tour with um, Make Do Men Heart Sounds. It's a short little uh, boom banger. Boom banger. A couple of days with Census Fail in July, and that connects with the Make Do Men ones. We're playing a couple of days in New Jersey, actually. Um, Maxwell's and Maxwell's Hangar 84 and Hangar 84. Those are the ones. Playing a one off of the Messing Spells. Yes. New York City. Pretty oh, you're doing one of their for the unheard nights? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So that'll be pretty. Uh, wow. Teenage Wet Dream. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What night are you guys playing? What albums? Are they night? Oh, July 6th. I think it's uh, Maniacal Laughter. And yeah. Like wow. I forgot. Oh, it's going to be good. It's gonna be nice. Awesome. Now, Buddy's your guys' manager, right? From Census Fail? Yes. Yeah, Working with Buddy, how you know he's been in the industry for. Ten plus years now in bands, label. Does he give you guys a lot of insight on you know do's don'ts? Yeah, it's it, more like it, it's been pretty good so far. He's it's just another guy to bounce ideas off of, you know. And he's just kind of um, he doesn't manage too many other bands, and I think he's right. kind of getting into that. And so it, it's been really good. I think we're we're learning a lot, um, you know, from working with each other, and it, it's just been it's been good so far. He's on like the same page, you know, when we like met with him originally, it was like, you know, we talked about our band and like what we believe in and like what we want to, how we want to showcase our band people. And it just like, it's good to have somebody who's just like on your side, who's like with you and what you want to do, you know, it's not trying to like, not trying to make your band something that it's not, they're just trying to like help your band do everything that you want to do, you know, and get your lyrics everywhere, get your message everywhere, get your music everywhere, you know. So, it's been a lot of fun. He's a nice guy. We, we talk pretty frequently. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's been good. Well, thanks for uh, hanging out with the Aquarian and, uh, you know, going along with the distra distractions, you know. Oh, yeah. Following tour members, yeah. good times, and uh, we'll see you guys this summer with Census Fail. All right. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the interview. Have a good rest of the Thank tour. I want to know where all the summers go. a lot and gig out and I think they're doing a great job. They're making like a name for themselves and they're just playing to the kids and they love the kids and kids seem to be into them. How's it feel to be on tour with them? It's alright. <laughs> it's alright. Right. Now if I if I hit stop, what would you really say about hostage con? Uh, yeah. uh, did you hit stop? Yeah, you hit stop. Yep. stop. Did you hit stop? It stopped. They're really good, like they're really fun to hang out with. Really good. <laughs> he jokes a lot, as you can tell. No. I do? Well, we thought a lot of know. What about those things you said yesterday? That was, you know, I'm not, I'm not a racist or sexist. <laughs> Clarify, mixtapes, not sexist. No. Sexy. Is my book bag sexy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I didn't mean to ruin your guys' interview. I mean, I did, but we liked it.